How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another gameplay commentary. Today we're talking about the five reasons why Halo does the team deathmatch game mode the best out of any other game mode. And I'm going to give the detailed reasons why. So if you enjoy these kind of discussion videos, please make sure to tap that like button. This lets me know you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below what your thoughts are on the team deathmatch mode as a whole when it comes to gaming. You have Halo, you have Destiny, you have now even, you know, they even try to wedge in team deathmatch when it comes to playing battlefield games and pretty much every other shooter out there has some form of a deathmatch mode and I think out of all of those Halo does it the best and in this video I'm going to explain why. Number one on this top five list is emphasis on knowledge is what I think really helps set Halo apart from other shooters out there on the market. Uh, if you know that obviously with Halo, uh, with Halo 4 they did mix it up with the loadouts but for the most part for the Halo franchise has been even starts when you start a match. That means that everyone else is on an even playing field and it's up to you to do well in the game not to be running around with the OP or meta weapons and stuff like that because whatever you pick up is going to be like a better weapon and you need to know where to go to pick those things up and that's why even starts i feel like is so important especially with halo where it just like it puts a big emphasis on your knowledge of how long you've played the game where you know where all weapon spawns and it's up to you just to you know do well in the game and use your knowledge right there uh, knowledge as in also using it to time power-ups and power weapons you know knowing that like the overshield spawns up every two minutes on this location you know there's no timer or anything like that on the game there's a game clock but nothing counts on going like overshield popping up in two minutes or anything like that and so then you can help with your knowledge of the game kind of you know tilt things in your favor obviously you don't need to be like the most MLG player in the world to just like hang in there and do well in Halo. I found from my experience right up until Halo 5 honestly was when I noticed that you don't really need to be the best you just need to know how to play. Uh, rip, you know, like Halo Reach, I definitely took advantage of this for, you know, back then there was no weapon spawn timers uh, that would tell you, like, two minutes until the next rocket launcher or anything like that, like there is now in Halo 5, which I totally agree with, but we'll get into that in a different video, because uh, in Halo Reach, I had, like, a 2 to 1 kill death ratio, just playing, like, you know, standard, you know, social slayer, and I was able to get, like, rockets every time, and get different stuff from power-ups, because I knew how to time them, and I knew when they would pop up and what location they would come, and so then I was wasn't really the best or really that good of a Halo player, but I was able to tilt the odds in my favor by knowing how to play the game. Where I feel like a lot of shooters nowadays really kind of lack on that, especially in games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, and uh, like Destiny. Though I'm thinking about all your major console shooters, obviously, like games like Counter Strike, obviously, you know, huge learning curve to that game. A lot of knowledge is needed to do well. And so that's why that game is so successful, though, as well, is because, you know, you. It's not just about outgunning people, it's also about outsmarting people, not you know, playing people with your brain rather than actually using your thumbsticks, if you know what I mean. Obviously, Halo is also about that as well, about outshooting players, but it's not just about all positioning and having the best gun in the situation. It's learning how to put yourself in a good situation to do well in the game. And I think Halo does a fantastic job of that, of melding those two together, where it gives you a really unique experience that I really can't get anywhere else in any other shooter that really gives me that fulfillment of doing well in a game. Number two on the list are power weapons and power ups. Now this obviously depends on how you design your game, but I think I really like the mechanics of the you know power ups and power weapons that pop up on the map because in a team deathmatch mode, most of the times it's up to uh, other players to kind of instigate the situation. Uh, like, like I said, in all these other games I've mentioned, like Call of Duty, Battlefield, Destiny, all the other major console shooters out there, there really is no need to press the issue or move around the map beyond just, oh, I'm getting overwhelmed, or hey, there's a guy right next to me coming at me, I, I should go get him, probably, but because it, most games really uh, reward a more defensive play style. And this is exactly what Halo does not promote. And then by adding power weapons and power ups on the map, it really helps create more motion on the map to help you push you forward. That's the reason why I chose this gameplay you see on the screen right now. This is ripped from my Twitch stream. That was, uh, by the way, link in the description down below if you want to follow me on Twitch. I do stream on there often. 
And uh, the thing is, the reason why I chose this mo gameplay to show you guys is because of this gameplay here, you can see that the enemy team decides to play super defensive, like they're crouch walking the whole time, and it's actually kind of hard to find players. We actually do hit the time limit on this one, but I feel like we were able to utilize the things like power-ups and power weapons and just map knowledge and general knowledge of spawns into being able to do better than guys who are just kind of camping in a corner. And I feel like you play in other game modes, say like in... Call of Duty, for example, that hiding in a corner or teaming up with like being very de defensive is actually more beneficial than really being overly aggressive and pressing the issue. I mean, that's why I really like playing Halo so much when it comes to the team deathmatch game mode because it kind of keeps that momentum going of the maps so that things don't slow down to a halt. And if things do come to a halt and people are not playing for power ups and power weapons, power ups and power weapons, then yeah, it's going to be a struggle for the camping team. Number three on the list here is emphasis on team play. All the other major shooters out there I see don't really put a big emphasis on team play as much as Halo does. I would say that Battlefield does put a bit of teamwork into the games, but it's more that, that everyone can kind of be more solo type players and they have things that kind of benefit each other rather than actually have the necessity of working as a team. Obviously, teamwork really is beneficial in all these games, but I feel like in Halo it's extra beneficial due to like the high uh, time to kill. So then, you know, it's team shotting is extra important. Being able to clean up everybody's kills or being able to help out in that kind of way is super beneficial to you in Halo. And so I've always found myself in, in this game to being you know one to stick with my team for the most part and play off of them but I don't come across on any other console mainline console shooter out there at all everyone has everyone all the other shooters out there I just kind of run as a lone wolf and, and eventually I end up just sometimes I do well sometimes I do poorly and I think but that's one due to like the short times of kills that are in these more pop other popular shooters out there. And I'm playing team when I'm playing Slayer in Halo, I'm constantly thinking about where my teammates are positioned, where are they pushing forward, what time the weapons are going to spawn up here, and try to stick with them to help benefit their ability to do well in the game as well. Or in other shooters, I've found myself just kind of playing, like I said, more lone wolf, not really caring about anybody else, not really playing off of them either. I'm, I might be playing off a little bit, going like, okay, they all went left, I'm going to go right, so then I can flank around. Where in Halo, I'm like, everyone went left. I'm going left because I want to help out them. Maybe, you know, they can help me out as well when I, if I get put in a terrible situation. And that's where I don't find it in other mainline shooter games. And that's why I like playing Halo Team Deathmatch so much. Number four and the reasons why Halo does Team Deathmatch mode the best is the general map design. I find that a lot of the game modes nowadays are kind of, you know, devolving down to the three lane technique that Call of Duty uh, you know, got down so well, and like to the point where every map in Call of Duty is three lanes, and it's kind of redundant. Where I feel like in Halo, especially with the sci-fi setting as well, I feel like it gives you a chance to be more ad adventurous with your map design and more stylistic, because you have more you have maps that are kind of set up like a ring in Halo, or you have maps that are kind of set up in long hallways or more wide open, spread out areas like you have a big team battle, and so you have like, these large maps, you have small maps, you have medium sized maps, you got long you know, hallway like maps you have you know it's just a wide variety of different kind of game modes and game styles that work well with halo and that's one thing about that i think it's fantastic that plus the size of the maps are perfect they are small enough to where it keeps the action fast but large enough to where you don't feel overwhelmed and that's a great thing i love about these arena kind of shooters especially with halo is because it's uh, I never feel like I'm bored. I'm trying to find people. The action's always flowing, and so that's why I really like playing these kind of game modes. Uh, the map design also generally has different kind of power positions, but there's always some form of a trade-off on these maps as well. Generally, uh, lower levels on the map can, might have more cover, but obviously you're on the low ground, where the higher ground locations are generally, you know, you have the advantageous positioning of being on the high ground, but you have the disadvantage generally of either having uh, less area to stand on, so where you can get hit by nades, or less cover to stand on. Like say, if you're standing on top of P3 in uh, Truth on Halo 5, yeah, you have an advantageous position of having the high ground, the highest point in the map, but the problem is that there is no cover up there. So it's a give and take, and I've noticed that it's a very common theme when it 
comes to these maps in Halo 5. You have a lot of verticality, but there is a balance to them, where I feel like a lot of games, especially like with Call of Duty, where they or even Battlefield, uh, where they try to add in verticality, but it's something like they're in a building with a window and all you can see is the top of their head. It doesn't lead to very fun gameplay. It's a very campy, slow gameplay, which is something I don't want to do when I'm playing my Team Deathmatch go games. I want to run around and go fast. And number five, the last item I want to bring up in here and why Halo does Team Deathmatch mode the best of any game out there is the deep skill gap that this game has. Because... Now, a lot of the major shooters out there, they do. You know, obviously, every game has a skill gap. You, you're, you can definitely tell when someone's new or when someone's experienced in most of these games. But in Halo 5, you have like noob, okay, pretty good, good, really good, and like god tier players. <laughs> there's a wide range of gap, skill gap right there. And there's something that's about Halo 5 or just Halo in general where I feel like I'm always learning. I've been playing Halo since 2001. Obviously, I took a break during Halo 4 because that's Halo 4, but that's a different game. That's a different commentary right there. <laughs> but I've been playing Halo since 2001, so I understand the basic mechanics, but I'm always learning it about how to play this game better because there's always somebody better and it's gonna be you know something where i'm gonna have the chance to keep playing this game and the, the thing about the skill gap it's not too daunting either halo 5 and or just halo with mechanics in general are very easy to pick up and learn and understand i believe it's the saying for the game of chess where it's saying it takes 10 minutes to learn but a lifetime to master and that's very very true when it comes to playing halo that the mechanics and the way the game plays is that it's super easy to pick up and learn how to figure out how to play the game. You just sit, you walk around with a gun, you shoot the guys. And the mechanics of those shooting is, feels really good. The weapons and the sounds and just the way the weapons hit the, you know, the players and stuff like that. It just feels really good. And so you can enjoy it on just a very social basic level of just that was fun to shoot that guy. But then also, if you want to get better and better, you have more improvements moving forward of like, oh, I gain better aim. I can go into Octagon and get better aim and stuff like that. Or just out, try to learn how to outgun players or how to better position yourself to do better in the game. There's a, such a huge skill gap in Halo that you're always learning, always improving, always doing better. And that's one thing I really enjoy about this game. Like for me, I feel like I kind of obviously could do better in like games like Halo or Call of Duty or Destiny or Battlefield. But generally, I feel like there's a point where I get to be that kind of casually good at the game where, I like say for Call of Duty, if I have a 2 to 1 kill death ratio, I'm like, you know what, I'm fine with that. I can do well with that. Same thing with Destiny or even Battlefield as well. We're like, okay, you know, I'm good enough to where I can at least, you know, be better than most players out there. I play and finish top of the leaderboard almost every game to where I can feel confident about my abilities. And that's all I really want to do is be like, you know, the top of the leaderboard every time I play in a match made game. The way that Halo f works is that there's uh, usually some kind of ranking system which is super deep and rich and really fun to rank up in as well. They usually get matched up against high tier players if you're a higher tier player. So there's always room for improvement. So to recap, number one, emphasis on knowledge of how to play the game. Having even starts and time and power weapons and knowing, uh, knowing weapon placement is super huge when it comes to playing Halo. And so being able to know how to play the game is half the battle of just being able to play the game really number two having power weapons and power ups on the map because I mean, it promotes movement it doesn't it keeps the gameplay pushing forward and so it keeps players instigating in situations they wouldn't normally get themselves into if there wasn't anything any reason why to go to certain areas on the map it also helps kind of create get more motion throughout the entirety of the map so then you don't have such hot spots in certain locations because of power positioning you have hot spots because of uh, where you know play weapons and stuff spawn up and so that kind of keeps the action going throughout the entirety of the map rather than just in specific locations like i find in other major games out there number three is the emphasis on team play i find that a lot of games nowadays put a lot of big emphasis on the solo queue player much like that because that's what call of duty really honed in on and really made popular and that's probably why it became such a huge game multiplayer wise because of how they can cater to the solo queue player where in halo it's not so much about the solo player, it's about the team and how to work well with those players. Obviously as a solo queue player you can do well, but you need to work with your team and I feel like 
Not only is it good for you to do well, but it's also beneficial for the team and yourself. Number four on the list was map design. Map design is such an important part when it comes to any shooter in general. And I feel like with Halo, you have the you have such verticality. You have you know very dead. sometimes maps you can just fall off of, so it creates more death areas to where we can make more risky maneuvers to try to catch people off guard. Like there's such a huge uh, level of depth when it comes to just these maps in general that it's so much more than just a map it's gives it provides brand new experiences rather than just being like it's a snowy map it's a dark map and like a lot of games trend to do and lastly we have five is the deep skill gap knowing how it's super easy to pick up halo and play and enjoy just a very basic level but then there's also if you want to, you can take it time to get really good at the game, put your time in, and just improve over and over and over. Like I said, I've been playing Halo since 2001, essentially, and I'm still improving at this game. So everyone, those are the top five reasons why I feel Team Deathmatch is done best by Halo. If you enjoyed these kind of conversational videos, please make sure to tap that like button so it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below what your guys' thoughts are on other games that do Team Deathmatch. What's your favorite Team Deathmatch game out there? You know, Let me know in the comment section down below. I do read all of your comments and try to reply to most of them as well. And if you're new to the channel, stay up to date with anything Halo related news or just topics or anything at all, make sure to tap subscribe with the bell to give you notifications every time we do something awesome on the channel, which is going to be every time. And if you guys are new to the channel or have missed anything from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right now. And you can check those out. And I'll hope you can see you guys in the next one. Peace out.